by the CEO of uh, Young and Rubicum. He said, I want you and David Broza, who's an extraordinary singer-songwriter, to write an anthem. And I said, I've got a better idea. I want to take 12 activist singer-songwriters, Native American, Keith Sakura, lives on the reservation, two of the peace poets, Black Lives Matter, uh, activist from St. Louis, who wants to be referred to as they, all of those advocacies, my daughter who's a great climate activist, and I want us to come down and not write songs for them, but elicit from them their words and their feelings. And can you imagine what it was like to be in front of these kids who had seen their friends, some of them actually killed in front of them. We were living in an entirely new pattern. I've, I've, I've explained this experience in my life to be s as powerful as singing at the March on Washington in 63, when Peter, Paul, and Mary sang, if I had a hammer and blow him anyway. Now, we, we had 12 songwriters, 35 students, and we split into five groups. And it was hip hop, it was rock, it was folk, it was country, but they wrote the words you're gonna hear now were written almost entirely by these, and none of us could have written those words. <laughs> the person who taught us all how to elicit these words from the, the, the young people was Steve Seskin over there. He, <laughs> yeah, Steve. he showed us how to do it, because he, it, it, it was extraordinary. And then we went ahead, and there's an album that's been made, and you're all gonna get a copy of it when you leave, if you so desire. And if you don't, we'll send you a link, and then we'll hound you until you actually <laughs> get it. <laughs> I cannot tell you, in all of my organizing efforts with Peter, Paul, and Mary, and individually, and whatever, it has been an anthem for me, and therefore I feel very at home with you at Nexus, to say that the most powerful experiences in our lives, other than our children and our family and those, those come from our knowing that we are doing something that can help and ennobling and inspiring and engaging with the kids and letting their voices come out. Now you're gonna hear one of the songs, and Steve Seskin, who wrote Don't Laugh at Me, which was the inspiration for Operation Respect, is going to lead us. and dreams 
Not just statistics, lives ripped at the seams Sitting behind your TVs and phone screens How can you ignore your own people scream? Have you gone numb to this? Is this your norm? Is that going on since before we were born? We won't be complicit, no, we need reform And we won't forget who we're fighting for, no We won't forget what we're fighting for We won't forget who we're fighting for America, wake up, yeah. wake up, America, wake up, wake up, America, wake up, yeah. wake up, America, wake up. Okay, now, this rap was written by Marisol. <laughs> and uh, Sophia and uh, Peyton helped to write many of the songs. But this next one that is, you had as a very special part in writing, has as, a, as a, a middle verse that pretty much states something that I think is really inherent in the essence of this Nexus Youth Conference. And it's expressed not only in terms of lyric and music, but also intent. So I'd like to ask them in their own voices to, to speak though that uh, that middle lyric and then we'll sing the song oh our voices will be heard our voices will be heard our songs will spread the word our songs will spread the word our truth will be the seed that grows the change our truth will be the seed that grows the change our, our truth, truth will, will be, be the, the seed, seed that, that grows the, the change, change.
You, you have no idea how proud I am to, s to see you here and how grateful I am to see that Nexus has given you this kind of focus. I, this, the album that you will receive, these are two of the songs, will be in large release. There, there will be a video tonight of, of the last song that you'll hear that what, what does this do? Does this scream no? It says no to this, but we have an alternative. And that alternative is to fill our hearts with the kind of, of empathy that has now become a black hole in this country, with compassion to care about each other. It is that which is the building block of the success of these movements. They have to come about from an eternal place of caring about each other. And that is the plea and the cry of these songs. And that makes them, and they are not, as I said, words that I or Paul Simon or the Beatles could have ever written. They wrote these songs. <laughs> right. So, I have, I have, um, I have one thing to say. We're, we're planning, and this is where Nexus can come in, to have, through Operation Respect, you get in touch with us. We want this kind of songwriting to go on in schools across America. We've got hundreds of songwriters who will come and mentor the kids, not write songs for them. And so if you contact us in your local area, will put you together with songwriters who can come. And these are songs specifically about making a better world, about peace, about loving each other, and about the forces that are so important today to lead us forward, which include the women, the LGBTQRSTWXYZ, <laughs> and, and the kids. It is their voices that are illuminating this environment. Yeah. Sophia, Sophia, I, I'd like to know from you, can you tell them a little bit about the experience of being together and writing? So we started writing these songs right after everything had happened in Parkland, and it was a very emotional time, and it still is, but being together and writing these songs was a place where we could all be strong for each other and spread our emotions no matter what they were and help us heal in a way that we couldn't really if we weren't able to write them. And uh, you did something that's emblematic of what a lot of the students are doing. And, and you are, you're a senior in college, right? <laughs> 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 no, I'm a freshman in high school, but... <laughs> <laughs> Four years ago, two friends and I started a not-for-profit company, and it's a bracelet company called Three Heartstrings. And one of the first bracelets we ever made was an MSD bracelet. 
And back then, all the proceeds from this bracelet went to school clubs and teams. But after the shooting happened, we wanted to help the community in the only way we knew how, and that was by selling these bracelets. And a year later, we have raised over $150,000 for the victims of the MSD shooting. And Mari, who is a brilliant poet, and who is, uh, he wrote that rap, and uh, who suggested the title for the last song we're gonna do. Uh, tell me, how do you think this effort of which you're part, what is your vision? How can this go forward and impact students, adults, and the opinions and the world leadership? What's gonna happen? Or what's your hope for something that might happen? You know, honestly, <coughs> I think that music is one of the most important ways of making change. No one goes, no one reads a 30 page um, paper about, uh, of legislation in their car ride to work. Everyone listens to music. <laughs> and so if you can use music to change people's hearts, you change people's minds, you change, you change the culture of a nation and ultimately that can lead to reducing the violence that killed our friends and classmates and teachers. Ultimately, I hope that activism through music inspires other young people. I hope that this makes more people conscien conscious of the struggles in their own lives and how we, we didn't care about gun violence before it affected us. But the sad truth is it can affect anyone. And so I feel like through music, we can make people aware of this and we can get people to act on it, honestly. Okay, this is the last song, but tonight you'll see a video of, of this, a portion of it. And this one was the first song that they wrote together. All of the 35 kids, they got in a room, and Steve said, what is the title? We'll choose, give me 12 titles, and then we'll vote on it. And Mari, my soul, came up with this title, it was chosen, and it was, I, we ne no, of, none of us, again, would have come up with this title. Song for the Silenced. And, and this is the song, and Steve took it, and he brought the kids into it, and they wrote not only the lyrics, but I remember you sitting on the couch, and like they telep telepathically were able to help write the melody. And uh, to me, this is an anthem. They, they're all anthems, but this one really strikes my heart. So. Uh, it is an up to you, my dear friends. Um, do you want to start it? Or, uh, Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I just uh, quickly want to say what an honor it was oh, please. to be included in the songwriter group that went to Parkland back in May. And then again in September, we did a concert in, uh, in Parkland, Florida. And then this is a reunion for us. So uh, thanks for inviting us. We're, it's right. always good to see well, Peter, for sure, and all, all oh, these I, I, wa I wanted to tell you something. All the writers who came down, and this is unprecedented, 12 of us, and Steve has written a lot of hit songs, like Don't Laugh at Me. We all said, we are earning nothing from this. We're giving all our rights to the song rights, to, for the publishing, everything, to these uh, two uh, organizations that the kids have created called Shine and Change the Ref, Change the, like a referee. And the, that, to do something, to do something that says this is not about money in any way is so precedential and important. And when you bring songwriters to your part of the country, that will be the agreement that they're not gonna make any money. We're doing something where the dollar signs are not in back of the eyes, where they're writing lyrics from the heart. This is a song for the 